So here at the ICE Method video course, I really have two goals for you. One is I want you to learn to use the ICE Method so it can really make a difference for your life. <clears throat> so here at the ICE Method course, I really have uh, two goals for you. One is part of the other. The main goal is that you learn to use this ICE method to um, achieve for yourself relief from your emotional Welcome to this video about the discovery, my discovery of the ICE method don't exactly know if I want to call it a discovery in some welcome to this video um, which is about how I became aware of the ICE method in this ICE method course and on this website I really have two goals for you one being a part of the other the main goal is that you learn to use the ICE method so that you can uh, achieve for yourself relief of your emotional and your physical pain. That is the primary goal. Another goal that I think helps to bring that about, to make that possible, is to understand scientifically and practically how the ICE method works. Um, I'm creating in the science sections a number of different videos that go into detail about the different aspects of the ICE method and how it works. Um, but for some of you, I thought it might be interesting uh, for you if you've got the time, a leisurely video here about how I came to be aware of the ice method and the process uh, for myself. So that's what I'm going to do here. Take your time, get a cup of coffee, uh, and if it's not that interesting to you, just pop off and get the information directly uh, from other sources. But if you are interested, here we go. Uh, 52 years old in this year of 2013. And uh, as a background, I have a lot of different things in my background, including a uh, Guinness World Record for unicycling through all 50 states, over 9,000 miles in about six months. Uh, not so pertinent. Two pertinent pieces, though, are that I have a background in mechanical engineering, so a real strong interest in science and how things work. Um, it's always mattered to me, sort of like, how does that really work? And if there's no good information for it, then my skepticism uh, would rise. My second formal training, my second formal background, is as a pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Um, I got a Master of Divinity and served in a couple different congregations, one in the Eskimo congregation um, in Nome, Alaska, and then a campus ministry in Michigan, um, and now I'm no longer serving as a pastor. Um, but that also informs my background, the idea of um, the importance of people and the caring for people, the sacredness of life. Um, what does it mean to be healthy? What does it mean to heal? Those were questions that came out of uh, my experience as a pastor. So that's a little bit about my background. After I left um, the ministry of the ELCA, uh, I started working with websites and helping authors. Um, after I had written my book about unicycling across the country, did that for about six years. And during that time, got really interested in um, healing. It just step by step grew on me. And uh, one of the first really big pivotal pieces in my life, I'm going to bring up the book here for you so you can see it, was learning um, the emotional freedom technique. And so I want to talk just a bit about this emotional freedom technique. Uh, it's based on acupuncture meridian points. It's based on tapping on them with your fingers. And... Uh, I was amazed. I actually did a couple advanced week-long trainings. I was amazed at how well this worked. Um, for myself, I got over um, some emotional issues that had really been dogging me ever since I was a kid. And I learned to relax about those. And then I started to help other people with it. And uh, one of the events was uh, a woman with a terrible migraine headache, but she'd had a surgery, so she couldn't take any medications for it. Uh, and a friend said, oh, you know what, you should just talk to Lars because he started this EFT thing. I think he was halfway joking. 
two minutes later, her migraine headache that was severe was gone. And I remember also helping a, a woman who had a tremendous fear of snakes. And within a half hour of tapping and paying attention to that, it's called tapping this emotion and freedom technique, um, her fear was gone. Um, half a year later, I saw her again, and she said, hey, I still don't have any fear. Um, our family actually stopped by her house some months later, and she brought out this jar that had um, rattlesnake uh, rattles in it from the tail, shook it, and said, see, I'm still not afraid. So those kinds of experiences were remarkable to me and um, started to get involved, really thought that I was going to be a practitioner of the emotional freedom technique, um, and that would be, be my job. But then the question came up, how does this work? How does this really work? And as I started reading, started digging into that question, how does this really work? Um, that was just a tremendous half-year experience for me, really, of intense reading. And one of the first uh, books that I came upon was by this author, Candace Pert, Molecules of Emotion. And if you're interested in how um, the ICE method works and how healing works, how health works in our body, um, couldn't really recommend another book uh, any more highly than Candace Pert's Molecules of Emotion. And it was in this book that I learned about peptides. They're short proteins, and they are created in response to whatever emotion we're experiencing in the moment. And these peptides then instruct both our mind and our body on what to do. So they are the instructions for our health. Um, this was a pivotal book for me. It's like, wow, there's actually a chemistry involved in what's going on um, in my experience of EFT. And I just found this tremendously um, exciting. Then I want to show you next another book uh, that was very important to me. And this is called The Biology of Belief. Bruce Lipton is a PhD. He was a researcher um, at Stanford and particularly interested in cell biology. And it's a really easily written book, very profound, because he looks at the ways that um, cells function. And the most important distinction for me was that cells are, as you can see on this um, sheet here, either in growth mode or in protection mode. And if we're in fight or flight response, you see if our body and our mind are defending us or attacking something in the outside world, then our cells are in protection mode. They actually shut down to some degree. And they're not concerned with having us live to be 100 years old. They're concerned with helping us get through just this next moment of fight or flight response. And that takes a big toll um, on our health. And finding this out and understanding this in terms of uh, cells and body function was just enormously helpful. If instead we can get our body into growth mode, in a relaxed, calm state, then our cells naturally take over for our health. So, um, you know, for, for those of you that know something, oh, I'm getting rid of that one too, sorry about that, come back here. For those of you that are, are starting to gain some experience with the ICE method, um, this idea that we could be in a calm state and we'd be healthy for our body, you know, that's pivotal, um, central to the ICE method. And also this idea of peptides that get created in response to our emotions and then are providing instructions um, for our life, our health, our well-being. Um, these two books were just enormously useful in my process. So I actually started moving a little bit away from EFT, um, which has the understanding that basically we're changing energy by um, tapping on these acupuncture points. And yet EFT was very effective. So why, why was it effective? What made it effective? And um, the explanation that EFT had with its energy and, and acupuncture points and stuff wasn't really matching up with what I was learning about cells and peptides. And then I came across this book. And this is by a, a gentleman, actually a scholar, professor, named Joseph Ledoux. And I just happened to see an article in the New York Times about anger and emotion. Got this book. 
and a fascinating book. Also, his other book called The Emotional um, Self uh, was a very, very useful read in terms of brain chemistry and brain function. But the piece that I found in this book was just basically on one page, just a couple of paragraphs, where he talked about a recent discovery in his laboratory called memory reconsolidation. And when I read that, then I thought I understood how EFT worked. And that was really when I started moving away from EFT because it's like, if this is the process that's, that's really at play, memory reconsolidation, then let's go after it directly. So um, this book here, The Synaptic Self by Joseph Ledoux, was tremendously um, useful. So let me understand how I, let me try to explain how I think that, that uh, EFT actually works. And what happens is in the beginning of an EFT process, you identify an issue, which is the same as the ICE method, right? We identify an issue. And then you start out by saying, even though I have this, whatever it is, this pain or this anxiety, I love and accept myself. And you say that three times. So what you're doing, I believe, is you're setting up a situation of memory reconsolidation. And I hadn't developed the ICE method at this point. But memory reconsolidation works by activating the synapse, then moving outside, coming back, and replacing that activated synapse, the peptides in that synapse, with different calm peptides. And so when EFT starts out, even though I have this anxiety about my bills that I have to pay every month, especially the one about my car, I love and accept myself anyway. You see there are two different emotional states. Anxiety about the car payment, love and acceptance. And my sense is that when EFT is effective, a memory reconsolidation replacement of the peptides has taken place. So as I started to, these pieces started to come together, it was like, okay, how could I do this as directly as possible? Because although there's nothing wrong with the tapping, it is maybe just extra steps that aren't really needed. And I remembered reading this book by Kinsler that I really enjoyed at the time. And his book is really quantum-based. He also comes out of a Buddhist tradition of many years. And in the book are some exercises for moving into a calm space. And he talks about moving into the quantum field, talks about euphoric feelings, all of those things are great. He has a whole method that he's developed called quantum entrainment, which I have enjoyed learning about very much. But the piece that I took from it wasn't the quantum piece, although I don't have any issue with that. It was just a very simple method for coming into this calm state so that you could create a different chemical peptide. And that's the two-point method of the calm state. I actually used other methods before uh, settling on this two-point method and I ended up choosing it because it just works for just about everybody that um, that tries it. The other methods that I was using before, they worked for a lot of people, but there were some people that had too much anxiety or too much resistance. They didn't enter the calm state and then the results didn't happen. So that was another one of the indications um, that what was happening was really a memory reconsolidation. If you didn't get into the calm state, if you didn't get out of your situation so that you created different peptides and then exchanged them, the results um, weren't there. And so these were, these were the books that um, really helped me to uh, develop the ice method. And as you can see, I just am using different pieces of science. I haven't done any original research or come up with anything that's entirely unique and original. I've put together pieces that um, are making sense to me. And more than just making sense, they're, they're showing themselves to be effective. So it was at that point that I started using this method that a friend of mine who's a masseuse and Alexander Technique and cranial um, sacral massage specialist uh, said to me, Lars, have you thought about working with people with fibromyalgia? And I said, no. And she said, you might want to check it out because people with fibromyalgia, it's pretty well known that there's both a physical component to it, but also, um, in many cases, emotional background. And so I thought about that, 
read up on fibromyalgia as much as I could. And, uh, you know, this really makes sense to work on this. Um, and then in the way that things sometimes work, a good friend of ours, her cousin, um, was a fibromyalgia specialist, a uh, nurse practitioner who worked with hundreds of people with fibromyalgia. So um, there was a study that I did, um, was able to do at the clinic of this friend's cousin. And you've seen that perhaps in another video already, but I just wanted to show it to you again. You know, that once I brought the ICE method to bear um, on people with fibromyalgia, these were their pain levels before. You can see up to level 10 for a number of them, just a couple high down to two, but a lot of severe pain here. And after a single session of the ICE method, you know, these were kind of the, even in the early days of me using the ICE method, these were the results. The majority of people, the vast majority of these people had zero pain after a single session. So really came to find out and understand that this ICE method um, was, was very effective. And I was very, very pleased uh, to get these results and I'm kind of surprised, I guess I have to say, that those results were so significant. These were people that had been under the care of these doctors, these uh, caregivers, for a long time. And uh, the pain had not gone away. And yet, using the ICE method, these people's pain went down, most of them to zero, in a single session. Um, one of the books that's been really important to me about fibromyalgia is, is this one. And bring that up called Figuring Out Fibromyalgia, written by Dr. Lipton, and it was actually at her clinic that I did uh, the study on these patients. Um, really a useful book. If you're a person with fibromyalgia, I totally recommend this book in terms of understanding the physiology of what's going on with fibromyalgia. But the piece that was super useful to me was um, that Dr. Lipton just flat out said, um, all of the symptoms of fibromyalgia come back to us having our fight or flight response stuck in the on position. Um, and then she went on to say that medical science hasn't yet figured out how to turn off our fight or flight response. But when we do that, we will have found a cure for fibromyalgia. Well, based on the reading that I've done and putting together this method, based on my experience with EFT before and now um, using the ICE method, I'm quite convinced that it's easy, actually, to turn off our fight or flight response. And this ICE method is a very simple and direct way of turning off our fight or flight response. The challenge, the ongoing work, is to stay in the state or to keep coming back to the calm state when we become agitated again. So these great results um, you know, that, that people experienced in a single session of the ICE method um, after they went home, went back into their stressful situations and didn't continue to use the ICE method because it was only a single session. And I didn't really at that time understand the importance of an ongoing um, use of the ICE method. Their pain returned. And so that's, um, you know, became sort of the big question for me is how do you help people to maintain this pain-free state? And the answer is we need to either stay in the calm state, stay out of the stress state, know the difference, make a distinction when we really need our fight or flight, and in those times when we don't, like an overdue bill, an argument with someone, a stressful situation at work, it doesn't actually help our body to be in fight or flight mode. It doesn't help it a bit. There's nothing we can physically do about an overdue bill. That's an exercise that we're going to actually address much more um, effectively when our mind is calm. That's a huge distinction, distinction to make. But it's not an easy one to make initially because we're so used to our body going into fight or flight mode for all kinds of things that aren't really physical threats. It's the way almost all of us have been raised and it puts an enormous strain and stress on our body and for some of us that ends up turning out as fibromyalgia. So in the ongoing development of the ICE method, the trick then is keep your fight or flight response turned off, stay in the calm state. And um, so what I've done is a couple of things. One is to create a book as a resource for people who have fibromyalgia 
And the fun thing is that other people I know are getting this book, they're reading it and saying, gosh, this is really worth part of my depression. Or I had so much anger at um, the person that I'm no longer in a relationship with, and I've been able to become calm about that. And then people with fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia who are reading this book, using the ICE method on an ongoing basis, and um, feeling better. Feeling better for a long period of time. And if they end up having stress come back, end up their body going into a reactive mode, here's a tool for them to come back into the calm space and again have their pain symptoms go away. So the other piece that I'm doing um, is the work on this website now. And why is that? It's so there's a resource for people to learn to have the calm space as our default space. You know, when all this stuff came together, I was so excited about it. Of course, I was always using this two-point method and going into the calm space because it made so much sense to me. And after a couple of weeks, what I noticed was, really, this became my default state. And then what happened was the exception was when something non-calm turned up. And I would pay attention to that. If it wasn't a real tiger or a boss running down, I mean, it was literally going to cause me physical harm. I would use the ice method, move back to calm. I would identify the emotion of the situation, move back to calm, and then exchange those peptides. This has made an absolutely enormous difference in my life. My life, as a default, is not stressed in fight or flight all the time. The default is calm. But when stressful things show up, I ice them. And when you ice over and over again, when it becomes your pattern to ice the stressful things, then fewer and fewer things over time show up as stress. That's my experience. And for those who take on ice and use it in their daily life, that's what they're experiencing too. So that's some background on how I got into this. Um, if you watch this, this is a pretty darn long video. I hope you had a lot of coffee or tea or whatever it took to get through it. But, but for some of you, you might be interested in this process. Um, the ice method itself is actually very simple. I trust it completely. I don't... I don't get freaked out when I'm working with someone with post-traumatic stress disorder, for example. You know, something where they could end up in dissociation, where they could go into a, a state um, that would be uh, very, uh, very dangerous, right? In some cases, when we go into that state, uh, people have PTSD. But the ICE method is so simple to use, so direct, and I have a way actually of keeping people from going out into highly charged situations, but still activating them and exchanging them. And you can use this process as a loop. You don't have to dive down and get stuck in those powerful emotions. Um, I guess what I wanted to say is I've come to trust completely in this process. And because I understand it from a scientific basis, I also believe that it's very, very predictable and repeatable. And it's given me a huge amount of confidence going in and working with people. Is it going to work for someone or not? I never know that. But I do know that for almost everyone that I work with, they're going to be able to access the calm state. And then those peptides that are created are going to provide an enormously healing uh, situation for all the 50, 100 trillion cells of the body. And they're going to feel better when I work with them. And then we can go back and forth, and we can just attend to those things that are causing um, non-calm emotions of anxiety, fear, sadness, anger. We ice those back and forth, and it's very, very common then for people to experience a reduction in their emotional and physical pain. I never can guarantee that because there might be actually a physical reason for that physical pain. But so many times, when we shut off the fight or flight response and we shut off the things that are creating fight or flight, then people feel better. In many cases, the pain simply goes away. And then what's there for a person is to say, wow, I've had this experience with zero pain. If I keep coming back to the calm state, I will live 
out of the calm state and I will have many more of these experiences with zero pain or with reduced pain. That's the choice that each person has to make. It's very counterintuitive. It's very different from our experience of life where we think we need to react to everything, we need to fight it, we need to overcome it. This is a calm method. And if we'll give it a chance, if we'll choose calm, then remarkable things will happen in our life. That's what I've come to discover and to understand you know, as I put this process together. So for me, being able to put a book out like this, Fibromyalgia Relief, it's just an enormous um, delight because here's a tool that I know can make a difference for people. I know that it does make a difference for people. And it's now available. It's easy to get. And in this website now, there's resources to help people stay in this calm state. It can make a huge, huge difference for our lives. All right. So I've yacked away. Um, thought for some of you this might be interesting to see where I've come from on this journey. Uh, there's a lot briefer videos, book reports about the science, the actual explanation of the science here on the science part of the show, of the video course, um, showing you those pieces, um, and then the ICE method, the how-to um, as well. So keep making use of this course, and the reason is you now understand for the social community is it's a place where we can stay engaged with ICE, with staying in the calm state, with continuing to exchange those peptides in our cup. So make great use of the social um, network. It's here on fibro myfibromyalgiarelief.com. Use it. Um, make it a part of your life. And as your pain goes down, recognize that you can offer support to others. You know, they say that teaching is the greatest way to learn. So if you're on this site and you're using it to help others, you can bet that it's going to make a great difference for your own life. You're not just going to go back into the same old way of living in a stressed, reactive life and experience pain. If you're out there helping other people to experience what you experience, um, it's going to help you stay attentive to calm and to the value of the ice method for your life. All right, thanks a lot. Um, good wishes with the course and with uh, being part of this network and with your life. My best wishes for you for emotional and physical uh, pain relief, for freedom in your life. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.